Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to do a fragrance tag. I was tagged literally months ago by Joss from Joss's Fragrance Mixology and I feel really bad that I haven't got around to doing this tag yet but I think it's such a good idea. So Joss's idea is to make you think about your fragrance taste as it was and how it's changed and try to show how it's changed through you liking different perfumes. So Joss called this tag the Me Now Frag Tag and she did tag an awful lot of people and quite a few people have done this tag already. So I'm going to tag one relatively new channel called Ruby Zion and I'm also going to tag another channel that I watch loads and loads, Grace Mwende. So to understand how my taste has changed I need to tell you about how my taste was. So I feel like when I was really young I really liked really fresh, almost marine, almost unisex fragrances. So I remember really liking Cold by Benetton. I also really enjoyed um, fragrances like Oceanus from The Body Shop. I, then I moved into more kind of fruity fragrances. So I remember owning a bottle of DKNY Be Delicious, which is an apple kind of cucumber fragrance, really refreshing, really nice for the summer. I then remember moving into more kind of rosy fragrances. So things like Marc Jacobs Lola, which is a, a peppery rose fragrance. I think as my taste matured and I got older, I started to like deeper, stronger fragrances. And the two that really stood out to me that were my signature fragrance at one time or another are Black Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. So I, I think I wore this between about 2014 and 2017. And I think really by the end of using Black Opium for a long, long time, I was just a bit Black Opiumed out. I just had enough of it. I just wore it to death and it just sort of killed it for me for a while. But yeah, it's coming back into the the things that I do sort of seek out and do do come back to occasionally. But not I don't wear it very often, for sure. The other fragrance that was one of my signatures was Diesel's Lover Dose. I probably wore this only for about, I don't know, maybe maybe less than a year, I would say. And this is associated with a time in my life where I wasn't that happy. And I think that's why I don't wear it that often, because it does bring back a scent memory of not being very happy. So that was where my taste was at, basically. So how has my fragrance taste changed? I would say the biggest thing that I can really think of is my strong aversion to white florals has just gone. So I remember trying Alien when it first came out and just not liking it at all. I felt it was way too strong and that I just could never even contemplate wearing it. And now I own a bottle and I do wear it. So that is crazy to me because this is just this one of the strongest, very piercing jasmine fragrances. And okay, it's kind of a clean jasmine now, but I'm sure it used to be a lot stronger unless it's just my taste has changed so, so much. But I just remember so much that I just didn't like this perfume and now I love it. So yeah, tastes do change and with perfume it can be really dramatic. I think the perfume that allowed me to love Alien was Madonna Truth or Dare. I remember buying this one in a bundle and being totally scared of it because it's known to be a tuberose bomb, isn't it, this perfume? But I actually love it. It's really, it's really, really creamy and I feel like if you hate white florals, if you go for a creamier white floral, it's definitely a way in. It's something that isn't going to be quite as scary as something that's potentially indolic. So yeah, try try something creamy would be my advice. I think another thing that younger me wouldn't have really enjoyed would be oud. And I feel like I ease myself into oud by buying a fragrance that is of a Middle Eastern style, but is a Western fragrance. And that is Nina Ricci Lex Stas Rose Absolute. So this one doesn't actually even have oud listed as a note, but I really do smell it in this fragrance. And it's just so beautiful. It's such a, a beautiful, bright, shining, tight rose fragrance. And the oudy note is just in the background. It's something that is just there. I mean, it's present, but it's definitely background to the rose. The rose is really the star of this perfume. And I think the fact that I love rose made me get over the oud. Um, but I remember when I first bought this, it was a massive shock how this smelled because I bought it blind, obviously. I bought it blind and it was just a huge shock that it didn't smell, it didn't smell like anything I'd ever smelt before. So um, yeah, oud, uh, Nina Ricci, like Stas Rose Absolute. 
So I think my taste has also changed in the way that I now consider more different types of scent profile. And I feel like one scent profile in particular that I totally missed out on, that I didn't really even think as a genre of perfume, was that kind of milky, lactonic, your skin but better, clean, musk, woody, that kind of fragrance. And I feel like the one that really kicked that love off for me and made me realise that that type of perfume was out there because if you only sample designer scents, you don't necessarily notice all of the different scent profiles because they follow trends, was Zedegan Voltaire's This Is Her. So this fragrance opened my mind up to the fact that this scent profile even existed because I'd never really smelt it before. So this one is a, a sandalwood, a creamy sandalwood fragrance with a lot of chestnut and a lot of pepper in the beginning. It's just such a distinctive perfume. So so different, so out there to all the other perfumes that I've previously tried. And I feel like that perfume opened up my love for Glossier U. So Glossier U is a, is a clean skin, woody musk kind of perfume with a bit of a peppery entrance. And yeah, this one is, is definitely one of my great loves. And I can't believe that I just dismissed an entire genre just because of trends in designer sense. That's ridiculous to me. Another thing that I think that I probably wouldn't have enjoyed as a younger person would be leather fragrances. So I think the perfume that kicked off the leather love was one that I wasn't really sure about, actually, to begin with. I remember getting it and thinking, oh, this really wasn't how I imagined. So people describe this fragrance as, as very cherry based. And I would actually say that I think it's quite powdery and quite rosy, but also very leathery. So this is Black Perfecto La Petite Robe Noir. And yeah, this was basically my first leather fragrance, my first experience of a leather fragrance. And actually, this is quite a, a black leather fragrance. This is quite a deep leather, but it, it is kind of disguised by those other notes. But yeah, this was the first perfume that made me think about leather as a note that I might like. So leading on from leather, I feel like my attitude to perfumes and the use of gendered terms in perfumes has really changed because... When you think about it, gendering in perfumes is something that has just come from society. It's something that is changing within society now. The lines between different genders are beginning to blur. It's, it's all a spectrum now. It's, it's not something that needs to be distinguished in perfume either. And I do think that my taste is changing in that way because I am more willing to try fragrances that are marketed towards men. I am more willing to, to buy unisex perfume it's something that I've really been thinking about over the last year or so. And I feel like this is pushed on people by designer perfume houses. It's because that's the type of marketing that gets you to buy perfumes. And it means that you have only a selection of perfumes to, to choose from. And in actual fact, what they should be doing is offering you a range of perfumes to choose from and letting you decide, not, not pushing you towards one or two because they're the right colour of pink or the right colour of blue. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, that's my that's my little rant about gendering in perfumes. The thing is, though, I do have that other side of the coin with me. I do feel like... I do feel like sometimes it's useful to know whether somebody thinks a perfume is traditionally masculine or traditionally feminine, but it is always a matter of opinion and you have to know the person giving the opinion to be able to know what their opinion is likely to mean for you, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, I suppose everything in perfume is a matter of opinion, isn't it? And that's that's the hard thing. That's why when people blind buy based from my suggestions, I become absolutely terrified. <laughs> because my taste is not your taste and your taste is not my taste. And that's how the world works. But yeah, um, I do it too. So I can't blame you. So yeah, I find it absolutely ridiculous that certain designer houses just gender perfumes that clearly, to my nose anyway, just smell entirely like they could be a masculine marketed scent. I just don't see why they do it. So for example, Gucci Guilty Absolute Poor Femme, perhaps it should be Poor Two, because it's not, to me, this is not a super feminine fragrance. This is not something that I think needed to be marketed in, towards women. I think they could have done really well with this scent as a unisex fragrance. I think a unisex marketed fragrance that really made me think about whether gender is important in fragrance was SJP Stash, because when I first tried this, I felt like it was super, super masculine. And then I thought, you know, 
it's just my own biases being put on my opinion of this fragrance. It doesn't mean that it's masculine. It just means I perceive those notes as masculine. And actually, you know, when I started wearing this, I enjoyed it. And, you know, it's a fantastic fragrance. It's something that is so unexpected. You know, considering you can buy 100 mil for like a tenner, this is a crazily amazing perfume for a tenner. It's so innovative. And yeah, I could have just not bought this just because it's unisex. That's ridiculous. Another thing that I've really realised recently is that I actually do like sweet fragrances and I like them far more than I realised. And I don't know why I never thought that I liked sweet fragrances because my signature scents were Black Opium and Loverdose. And those are two of the most sickly sweet fragrances you could ever wish to come across. They're both vanilla based, you know, they're, they're super sweet. And I think the one that really made me realise that I do like sweet fragrances, probably more than I imagined, was retesting Scandal by Night. So this is just a really sweet, sticky cherry perfume. And I think I didn't really realise just how sweet this is because I'd always been overanalyzing it. I'd always been smelling all the different stages and noticing all the like the medicinal bits in the beginning. But really on the dry down, this is just super sweet and sticky. I think that's that's the thing. I think I associate really sweet fragrances with teenagers basically. And I I want to distance myself as a nearly 40 year old as someone who has grown up a bit from my teenage years but ultimately do we do we need to grow up I don't think we need to grow up do we and that's just again a very biased view isn't it it's a biased view saying that younger people like sweeter fragrances and it, it's not true at all you can enjoy any fragrance at any age and why should I give up sweet fragrances just because I'm nearing 40 that's silly if I like sweet fragrances I like sweet fragrances there's nothing I can do about it that's Scandal by Night by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And finally, the last thing is that I, that I really enjoy different types of rose scent now. So I think that I didn't really think of Chypre as a genre of fragrance that I really enjoy. So I bought Miss Dior 2012 version about, I don't know, at least 12 months ago, maybe maybe two years ago. And that one, I, I felt like initially it was a bit too classy for me. I didn't really wear it that much, but I've been wearing it a lot more recently and I feel like I'm getting more into that kind of scent profile of Sheepers. I also feel like I've got more into this. So this is Romance by Ralph Lauren. And I feel like this perfume, I would have felt like it smelled really old fashioned and perhaps something that I didn't want to wear. And it's just like quite a soapy rose fragrance, but with a lot of oak moss. So again, it's a Sheeper kind of rose. But yeah, this is something that I probably wouldn't have enjoyed when I was younger. And it's surprising to me just how much my taste has changed. So please let me know, has your fragrance taste changed as you've matured and grown up? And do you hark back to those fragrances that you always wore when you were younger? Is there a special scent from your teenage years that you think, yeah, I'd love to smell that again? Or do you own those teenage scents? Is there one in particular that just brings those memories flooding back? How has your scent changed? Please let me know down below. And if you've liked this video, please like this video. And also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.